it's time to discuss who has the best kicking game in mixed martial arts. These are fighters that can dominate fights with kicks alone. And I'm going to be ranking these fighters with a tier list ranking system. The fighters at the top of the tier list, the best ones are going to be ranked on how efficient they are with their kicks. How often are they winning fights with their kicks alone? And can they finish people with kicks? For the most part, outside of the F tier, all of these fighters are going to have very solid kicking games. We're only talking about the best. So if a fighter's in the C tier, they still have a really good kicking game, but they're just, they're not in the A tier, B tier, right? But they're all good. All right. So let's get into this. First off in the C tier, just needed to get that out of the way. It's Justin Gagey. I think that he's got a good kicking game, but I do think that he is an overrated kicker. All right. And I know that people are going to be pounding their desk and, and pissed off and typing in the comments. How dare you? How dare you tell me that Justin Gagey is not the, the S tier kicker? Justin Gagey is one of the most overrated kickers in MMA right now because he is a changed fighter. All right. When Justin Gagey came into the UFC and he was spamming leg kicks at Dustin Poirier or Michael Johnson, or when he was in the World Series of Fighting and he was leg kick TKOing people, I would have him a lot higher. The issue is, since he's become more efficient with his kicks, he's throwing like four leg kicks around. And it just isn't having the same effect, the same ability to totally change a course of a fight like it used to, right? It was hardly a factor against Max Holloway. It was hardly a factor against Michael Chandler. Again, Gagey has good kicks. He's got good leg kicks. I know he had kick TKO Dustin Poirier. One head kick TKO is not something that I'm going to sit here and say, oh, wow, Justin Gagey's kicks are just, it's one head kick. We're talking about the leg kicks for the most part. That's what he's known for. He doesn't have amazing body kicks. He doesn't have great knees. It's the leg kicks. And we're lucky to see four or five of them around at best. And I know Max Holloway had a bruised leg, but come on. Like if you're not Joe Rogan, you shouldn't have an aneurysm about a bruise. It was not changing the course of that fight. For the most part, Justin Gagey is a boxer these days, and I do not think he is making kicking as big of a part of his game as he would need to in order for it to be a more dominant thing in his division, all right, or in his fights. So I'm going to put Justin Gagey, who is a good kicker. He's got really solid low kicks in the C tier because he doesn't throw a lot of them anymore, and they don't have the same impact because of that. So I'm going to put him in the C tier. In the S tier is going to be Edson Barboza. Edson Barboza may have the most versatile kicking game in the UFC. All right. And he's been around for forever. He is tied for the most leg kick TKOs in UFC history. He has multiple flying knee finishes in his career as well. He's got one over Dariush. He's got one over Billy Corntillo, even though it wasn't really a flying knee. And he's also got tons of spinning wheel kick. TKOs, all right? He's got body kick finishes where he's been folding people with body kicks. If you watch his fight with Dan Hooker, that, in my opinion, is the best display of body kicks, overwhelming someone and breaking them down. It's one of the most brutal fights you'll ever watch, a one-sided beatdown. But Barboza's got everything. Switch kicks to the body, wheel kicks to the face, right? Spinning wheel kicks. He's got spinning back kicks. I mean, the UFC just posted uh, five Edson Barboza spinning wheel kicks where he's like rocking every single one of his opponents with them. So Barboza's up there. He's got to be S tier. He's got so many finishes with his kicks. He has leg kick TKOs. He has it all. So I, I got to put him in the S tier. Uh, but let's get a guy. Let's get a volume guy in here. All right. Let's get a volume guy because I just said Gagey doesn't really throw a whole lot. Well, let's see someone that does throw a little bit more than Justin Gagey to where it can impact a fight to where he can win fights with it. And that's Israel Adesanya. I'm going to put Adesanya in the B tier. All right. Now, it's no secret that Adesanya is a more versatile kicker than Justin Gagey, right? He's got really good roundhouse kicks to the body. He's got pretty good knees. He's got nice head kicks. Um, but he's not like totally washing people out with his kicks. I think Izzy at this point is like 60% kicks, 40% boxing, but he's not the highest output striker either. And yeah, he's got a nice flashy question mark kick, but how often is he really landing it, right? This is not the who's got the best kicks on the pads or who's got the best 
looking kick even though it misses 90% of the time. Adesanya has landed that question mark kick on, what's his name, Derek Brunson. But it's not like he's just head kick KOing people all over the place. Um, and it's not like his leg kicks are finishing fights or totally changing the course of a fight, right? And he's not really overwhelming people with them that often either because he is a little bit low output. So I'm going to say Izzy's beats here because he wins fights with his kicks. He's really good at putting points on the board with his kicks, like just, you know, racking up leg kicks at range and whatnot. Again, pretty good body kicks as well. So I'm going to put him B tier. But the reason why he's not A tier is because it's not dominant enough. You know, someone that is going to be A tier is going to be Cyril Ghosn. I talk about someone that can overwhelm people with kicks, right? I'm talking about someone that is putting a ton of volume out there with kicks. Um, that's also really versatile with his kicks. That would be Cyril Ghosn. In my opinion, the most underrated part of Cyril Ghosn's game are his step-in knees to the body, right? And I'm not even talking about clinch knees to the body, but like stepping into the clinch, landing a knee, and then folding his opponents with that, right? Now, fair enough. We don't really see a lot of kick finishes from Ghosn, but he overwhelms people with kicks. He basically diminishes his opponent's gas tank with his kicks. He can spam front kicks to the body over and over and over again on these fat, sloppy heavyweights that are just going to sit right in front of him. And because Gon is in really good shape and because he's a good athlete and he's agile, he can really easily just beat the shit out of people with kicks at range. The front kicks to the body, the step in knees. He's also just got a really good clinch game in general. So the regular knees to the body and the clinch are awesome. He's got good head kicks. Uh, the only thing stopping him from being in the S tier is that there's not an, enough finishes with them, right? And he's not like leg kick TKOing anyone or totally annihilating people and changing the course of a fight with like a couple of kicks. For Gon, it's about volume, right? But he does overwhelm people in his division and uh, he is very impressive with his kicks. So I'm going to put him in the A tier. Someone else that is going to be in the A tier who am I going to put in the A tier? Who's got amazing kicks that's not necessarily S tier level? It's interesting, but you know what? Let's see. Who should I put in the A tier? This is tricky. I am going to put someone in the S tier. I'm going to put Jan Blahovic in the S tier. All right. Jan Blahovic, very different fighter than Edson Barboza. And Sorogon, he's got like these simple, oafy, plotty, heavy low kicks, like these big, ugly low kicks, right? And Jan, he's not going to wow you. He's not going to throw any wheel kicks, but his low kicks alone are some of the most effective kicks in the UFC right now. And I've seen Jan Blahovic break people with low kicks. And he's got such good low kicks that he doesn't care if they get defended and checked. He will go shin to shin and he'll still get the better of those exchanges. We've seen him wobble around Magomed and Goliath with low kicks. We've seen him hurt Alexander Rakic with low kicks. And we've seen him also have some really solid roundhouse kicks to the body and lead kicks to the body. Look at his fight with Dominic Reyes, where Reyes had his ribs all bruised up because of just a few lead kicks to the body from Jan Blahovic. So he's got some of the most powerful roundhouse kicks and leg kicks and low kicks in MMA right now. But the biggest reason why Jan Blahovic is in the yes tier is because I believe this guy has the best defensive kicking game in the UFC. He is the best leg kick and body kick defender in the UFC right now. All right. I know that someone was able to out leg kick him a little bit, but that's because he has the most untelegraphed leg kicks, and we'll talk about him in a minute. But Jan Blahovic has the best display of defending kicks. He has shut down people like Israel Adesanya, Luke Rockhold, Alexander Rakic, just to name a few, with his defense. And the three fighters that I just named, Adesanya, Rakic, Rockhold, all of these fighters for the most part on the feet are kickers. All right, Rakic is a little bit in between, but he's got some of the strongest leg kicks in the game. Adesanya is a great kicker. Luke Rockhold is a great kicker. Jan Blahovic. You could watch his fights back with these guys. He is checking everything. Sometimes it's kind of hard to see if something gets checked, but Blahovic, he'll show you, man. This guy is so good and fast at like bringing up his leg uh, and checking everything. Like he'll check body kicks. This dude will check head kicks. All right. 
It's insane. And he easily shuts these guys' game down with that defense. Because again, these are fighters that have to win with, you know, starting with kicks. And if Blahovich takes that away from them, now they have to box with them. And he's also really good there. And he's dangerous there. So uh, Blahovich, the best leg kick defense and body kick defense in the UFC, in my opinion. Um, so I have to put him in the S tier. Alex Pereira. We're also going to put him in the S tier. Now, I don't think Pereira is as good defensively, even though he is. He's really good at checking kicks. Absolutely. He was checking a lot of Adesanya's kicks. He was even checking some of Jan Blahovic's kicks. But he's also S tier because he outleg kicked Jan Blahovic. Like, he is the only person that I saw get the better of Jan Blahovic when it came to leg kicks. Blahovic wasn't wobbling around Alex Pereira with his kicks. Pereira, on a few occasions, had Jan Blahovic wobbling around a little bit with his leg kicks. And Alex Pereira has the least telegraphed kicks or leg kicks in the UFC right now. You can't prepare for them. You can't see if they're coming. He doesn't have a tell. He doesn't twist over his hips at all. Um, and they're also extremely powerful, which is crazy because, again, he's not really, he doesn't really look like he's putting a lot on them. Yet they fuck with people, all right? And you see his opponents have to switch stances. And you see his opponents slow down a lot. He even knocks people down with them sometimes. Like in his fight with Yuri Prohaska, he was dropping Yuri with low kicks as well in that fight. Um, so I have to put Alex Pereira in the S tier. Uh, he's also got some really sneaky head kicks as well. Uh, so I have to mention that too. Another guy that I'm going to put on this list. This is going to be an F-tier fighter. That's Yuri Prohaska. Speaking of Yuri Prohaska, even though Yuri's a really dangerous striker, his kicks are so clumsy, slow. They look like he's, you know, he looks like he's in slow motion when he's throwing these kicks. He looks like he's throwing a changeup. Like he's purposely throwing them at the slowest speed possible. He has no sting on his kicks. Um, and they're flimsy. They just don't look powerful. Uh, it looks lazy. I don't understand what Yuri does when he's like throwing a flimsy body kick or a flimsy leg kick with absolutely nothing on it. But it just looks real ugly. And he does not win his fights with it as well. So I'm going to put Yuri Brahaska in the F tier just to kind of put someone down there. All right. He stands out as someone that has some bad kicks. So on to the next one. Jose Aldo. I'm going to put Aldo in the A tier, all right? Now, I understand that a lot of people might want to see him in the S tier, but at this point, he doesn't really throw enough volume with his kicks to be up there. And yes, he shut down Jonathan Martinez's leg kicks very well, but that's also because his leg kick defense is elite. But I just think offensively with his kicks, he's not at the level he once was. Sort of like Justin Gagey, who I would have had higher back in the day. Aldo isn't like leg kick TKOing people anymore. He's not spamming leg kicks anymore. He's not hurting people and dominating people with his kicks as much as he used to. He has kind of transformed into a predominant boxer, but his leg kicks are still really solid. Um, his leg kick defense is as elite as it gets. So for that alone, he should be in the A tier. And he's also got some really good flying knees and knees to the body as well. But the only issue that's holding him back from the S tier is just the volume. Just doesn't throw enough volume. Uh, Jonathan Martinez. I'm going to put Martinez in the S tier. I know. Aldo shut him down. I get it. The thing is, I think if you put Jose Aldo in front of 10 different opponents and you put Jonathan Martinez in front of the same 10 opponents in the Bantamweight division, Jonathan Martinez has a much higher chance of like out leg kicking those fighters and like changing the course of a fight with the leg kicks alone. And sure, you can make the argument that, well, actually, Aldo's a better fighter in general, so he'll do better. And Martinez won't have the same ability to set those kicks up. But in general, when it comes to the kicks alone, I just think that Martinez's leg kicks, he is tied at the age of 29. He is tied on the all time list for the most leg kick TKOs. How many lighter weight class fighters have? A leg kick that is as damaging as Jonathan Martinez. And if you're not as good as as Jose Aldo at defending them, he's going to get to you. Unless you take him down. Unless you knock him out early. You have to have next level leg kick defense to be able to get the better of him there. But, you know, I still think two leg kick TKOs this early on in his career um, is really solid. And if this guy gets like four or five, 
winning fights with leg kicks alone is really impressive. Okay, so I, I'm going to put him in the S tier. I'm still putting him in the S tier. B tier, I'm going to put Roman Kopilov in the B tier. Now, he doesn't have that many elite wins in the UFC. He doesn't have elite wins in the UFC, but I think Roman Kopilov has the best roundhouse kick to the body in the heavier weight classes. Some of the best liver kicks, right? He folds people with roundhouse kicks, man. This guy has a lot of sting on them, a lot of power on them. We saw him beat up Punelli Soriano with kicks. We saw him beat up Josh Fremd with body kicks. And of course, we even saw some nasty body kicks in his last outing, which he lost, but he still looked really dangerous in that one. And um, yeah, I think Roman Kopilov is some of the most dangerous body kicks in the UFC. So I'm going to put him in the B tier. Another S tier fighter, Yair Rodriguez. The variety of kicks that this guy has in his arsenal is next level. And so for that reason, I'm putting him in the S tier because he is one of these guys that with his kicks alone can also win fights, right? I, I think that Yair Rodriguez, you know, him having Volkanovski and Max Holloway shoot takedowns on him is a credit to how dangerous he is with his kicks, right? Because it's the boxing that dropped Brian Ortega, the only guy to ever drop Ortega. And people act like this guy's just a easy fighter to beat. But either way, it's the kicks that are giving people issues for the most part, right? It's the potential head kick over the top that's making Volkanovski second guess the striking with a guy as dangerous as Yair. It's the unpredictable kick at the end of a one-two that people can't see coming that makes people want to shoot takedowns. I mean, we saw what he was doing to Max, just mincing up Holloway's legs, landing head kicks at will. All of these kicks are untelegraphed. All of them are extremely fast, and they're all very dangerous too. He's got a bunch of kick finishes in the UFC on top of that. Um, and his roundhouse kicks to the body, just his simple roundhouse kicks are also really good. He was folding Josh Emmett with those. So I got to put Yair Rodriguez in the S tier um, because again, He's flashy on the feet. You don't know what's coming. He's really good at putting kicks at the end of combinations to sneak them in there. And everything's fast. Everything's dangerous. So I'm going to put him in the S tier as well. B tier. Volkanovski. I'm going to put Volk in the B tier. Volk has really solid body kicks. Roundhouse kicks. Lead kicks to the body. Switch kicks. And he's got really good leg kicks. But he's not that dangerous with his kicks. And it's not like... you know He's not like Alex Pereira where... He's totally taking away his opponent's movement with his kicks. To be fair, he has won a title fight against Max Holloway with kicks for the most part in their first fight. But that's like, and he did out low kick Jose Aldo, which was also really impressive. He's one of the few fighters to be able to land a lot of kicks on Aldo. It's mostly volume, right? He's not got the dangerous element that's needed for him to be in the A tier. He can't necessarily overwhelm people as well, like Gone right? Or like Yair Rodriguez. The volume isn't crazy for kicks alone, especially since Volkanovski these days, for the most part, a big part of his game is boxing and offensive grappling and whatnot, but his kicks are still really solid and he's really fast with them as well. Uh, so I'm going to put Volk in the beat here. Just got some good old basic kicks, man. Bilal Muhammad. I'm going to put Bilal Muhammad in the C tier. All right. I think Bilal Muhammad has a really underrated kicking game. All right. Now, again, C tier, he's got good kicks. Arguably, he has better kicks than Justin Gagey. You know what? I actually think he has better kicks at this point than Justin Gagey. And people are going to get pissed off that I'm saying that. But hear me out. Gagey's throwing four kicks around, all of them to the legs. They're not necessarily winning fights for him, right? Bilal Muhammad is keeping people at the outside. And beating the shit out of people with kicks on the outside. Body kicks, head kicks. And not only is he beating people with kicks, but like he's got really solid technique. And he's throwing kicks that you don't expect to be as fast as they are because he's a wrestler. And a lot of these wrestlers have a bit of a stiff build like Kamar Usman or Colby Covington or Habib. Bilal Muhammad's getting those kicks out there super fast. He's very agile with them and they're pretty damn impressive. So I got to put him in the C tier. I mean, even though Gilbert Burns was injured when Bilal fought him, Bilal was mincing him up at range with kicks, just putting them together really effortlessly. So uh, very underrated kicking game from Bilal Muhammad. Next up, we have 
John Jones. I'm going to put Jones. This is tricky, man. This is very tricky. I'm going to put Jones in the B tier. I think that in his prime, we're talking about an S tier kicker because of how good his clinch game was and how good his knees were and head kicks and front kicks and body kicks and leg kicks. But since 2019 and 2018, since his Anthony Smith and Gustafson 2 fight, he's not looked that impressive with his kicks. Against Reyes, they were all right. He's got some good spinning back kicks in there against Reyes and whatnot, but I don't know. There's still a lot of questions that need to be answered at heavyweights. We saw Jones throw like one spinning leg kick against Cyril Gaon, and that was kind of it. It's been forever since he's shown us striking anyway, so I'm just going to assume it's just not as good as it used to be as well, just because his last two performances before Gaon, his kicking game did not look in any way, shape, or form that impressive. Back in the day, he would have been higher. Right now, uh, I'm going to give him the respect as someone that is one of the best kickers in UFC history. But now I, I don't think I could put him that high just because we haven't seen a whole lot of it, right? But I'll put him B tier just because Jones, for the most part, on the feet, kicks. That's what he does, right? And he's really good with it. And he's really good at keeping distance with his kicks. Uh, on to the next one, Peter Yan. I'm putting Yan in the B tier. Similar to Roman Kopilov. He's one of these guys that, for the most part, is a boxer. But when he does throw kicks, they're perfect technique. He's got some of the best roundhouse kicks to the body. And it looks like they take the wind out of people. I mean, Sean O'Malley was talking about how the thing that hurt the most in his fight with Jan were the body kicks. And they look like they hurt. Really good switch kicks to the body. And also, Peter Jan has some really underrated head kicks. Look at him dropping Uriah Faber with a front kick. Right? Look at him throwing spinning wheel kicks against Song Yudong and, you know, hurting Corey Sanhagen with a spinning wheel kick as well. So I think that Jan has some really underrated kicks. Everything that he throws is perfect technique as well. The only issue is, you know, he doesn't have a lot of volume on them, right? So Volkanovsky, for example, lots of volume, but they're not as powerful as Peter Jan, right? And he doesn't have the same variety as a guy like Peter Jan. But Jan, I think, is a really underrated kicker. So I'm going to put him in the B tier. On to the next one. Islam Makashev. I'm going to put Islam Makashev in the B tier. Makashev's got amazing kicks. He was able to hold Volkanovsky at bay in the rematch with kicks alone. Long roundhouse kicks to the body. Head kicks. Leg kicks. And the most underrated part of Islam Makashev's game is his clinch game. And the reason why he's so dangerous there is because of the knees. He's got amazing clinch knees to the body. As soon as you see him in the clinch with people, he's mincing them up with knees to the body. And he's also got some really good knees to the face where he was landing those on Volkanovski in their first fight. He's even TKO'd or, or hurt people and dropped people with knees back in the day. So I do think that Islam Makhachev is a very underrated kicker. And of course, we're going to include knees on this list because I'm not just going to make the best knees list, okay? We're going to do knees as a part of the kicking game for the sake of this list. Let's get on to the next one. Sean O'Malley. I'm going to put Sean O'Malley in the A tier, all right? I am going to put him in the A tier. Speaking of knees, Sean O'Malley's knee up the middle, the same one that he caught Jan with and cut him open with, the same one that he caught Cheeto Vera with, which would have knocked out. 99% of the people in his division. All right. I don't know how Cheeto Vera took that knee. It was the, the craziest sound I've ever heard while watching a fight. It honestly sounded like it had broke Cheeto's whole face. But O'Malley's knees are nasty. And he's got really good flashy kicks, spinning kicks, head kicks, right? But most importantly, O'Malley's really good with his leg kicks. He has very strong leg kicks. He has really solid teeps to the body. And if he wants, he can hold people at bay with them, right? The only thing stopping him from being in the S tier is that he's slowly but surely at this point turning into a predominant boxer. And for the most part, he boxes, but he has the ability to just keep people at bay with his kicks alone. Did a really good job at that when he was fighting Thomas Almeida. Held him at range easily with front kicks and leg kicks and oblique kicks and whatnot. So, yeah, I think O'Malley has to be mentioned here, too. And also, he's 
head kicked people and knocked people out with them like Jose Quinones. And I believe he even dropped Thomas Almeida with a head kick as well. And he's got a bunch of head kicks before he even entered the UFC. So O'Malley, I'm going to put him in the A tier. He could do a ton with his kicks, uh, but it's really the basics that make him so dangerous. And that knee, very underrated weapon from Sean O'Malley. So let's get on to the next one. Ian Gary. I'm going to put Ian Gary in the B tier, all right? I think Ian Gary is kicking game. You know what? <sighs> Fuck it, man. I'm putting Ian Gary in the A tier. It might be too soon. It might be a little bit too soon, but this guy was throwing step in knees on Jeff Neal, which I don't think people give him enough credit for because Jeff Neal is one of the most dangerous heavy hitters in the welterweight division. And for Ian Gary to be closing the distance, crashing in, with step in knees is very impressive. Ian Gary's leg kicks also underrated. He was taking Neil Magny off of his feet when he was leg kicking him, right? He's got incredibly strong low kicks and he's got good front kicks to the body. He's got good head kicks. He's got good roundhouse kicks. Uh, we saw him head kick KO uh, Rodriguez D-Rod. I think he's got a really good kicking game. His boxing's real good, but I think actually... The most impressive part of his game, in my opinion, is his ability to throw kicks with volume and with good power as well. So I'm going to put Ian Gary in the A tier. I think, you know, arguably he's a top three kicker in his division. And the reason why that's impressive is because his division has some of the best kickers in the UFC. Speaking of one of them, Wonderboy Thompson, I'm going to put in the S tier. All right. Wonderboy Thompson is not very powerful with his leg kicks or body kicks. But man, Wonderboy Thompson can style on people and embarrass them with his kicks. And if he lands the right spinning head kick on you, spinning wheel kick, question mark kick, hook kick, scissor kick, whatever the fuck Wonderboy Thompson's throwing, if he lands the right shot on you in the head, you're done. He's got a bunch of head kick KOs throughout his career. As he's gotten older, we're not seeing a whole lot of them, but the dude is 41 years old and embarrassing people with his kicks, okay? This guy against Kevin Holland looked like he was fighting in a karate movie. It looked like it was fake. That's how impressive Wonderboy Thompson was. He's literally pulling off spamming spinning wheel kicks, question mark kicks, hook kicks in a UFC fight against a dangerous guy like Kevin Holland, which is just insane. And also, I talk about like him embarrassing people. He's not hurting people with leg kicks that often, but... Wonderboy Thompson will, like, take you off of your feet with a simple sidekick to the body, right? And he can just keep you at range and make it impossible for his opponents to close the distance by just spamming that sidekick to the body and, you know, catching you off guard with head kicks. So I think Wonderboy has to be mentioned. Fair enough, a big part of his game is also his hands. Like, he's got really good hands as well. But the kicks are ridiculous from Wonderboy Thompson. He could do it all when it comes to his kicks. Another guy. That has to be on this list. I don't know where he's at. Uh, I forgot to include him. But I'm going to put MVP. In the A tier. Alright. MVP is going to go in the A tier. Michael Venom Page. Insanely good kicks. Great flying knees. He's got a bunch of flying knee KOs throughout his career. He's got a bunch of head kick KOs throughout his career as well. But a lot of Michael Venom Page's success comes from the hands as well. And I need to see him do a little bit more with his kicks in the UFC. Maybe in his next fight, if he goes out there and wins a fight with his kicks or looks really solid with it, I'll put him in the S tier. But for now, um, I'm going to put him in the A tier. All right. He's up there with the best of them because of how explosive he is. But again, you know what? Fuck it. Fuck it. I'm putting MVP in the S tier. I've seen this dude like kick TKO people as well and like bend people's knees back into their leg with leg kicks. So I'm going to put him in the S tier, actually. Uh, Michael Venom Page is insanely good with his kicks. Uh, so I'm going to put him in the S tier with Wonderboy Thompson. On to the next one, Corey Sanhagen. I'm going to put Sanhagen in the B tier, all right? I know that some people are going to say, what do you mean he's not A tier? Uh, I just, you know, listen. Sanhagen has a flying knee KO. Sanhagen has a spinning wheel kick KO. Fair enough. But at the same time, outside of those two finishes, he's got good body kicks. He's got really good roundhouse kicks. He's got really good leg kicks. But 
he's not necessarily doing anything other than putting points on the board. Like, Sand Higgins not folding people with body kicks. Um, and he's not just kicking for the most part. Like, he's not overwhelming people with his kicks. He has, he has great technique, don't get me wrong. But this is about how effective are you? Like, are you winning with the kicks? Are you dominating with them? Are you finishing people with them? Outside of his two finishes where he's been able to flying knee someone and wheel kick KO someone, a lot of Corey Sandhagen is just efficiency, just putting points on the board, which is really good. He's in there with some other great kickers, but I'm going to put him in the B tier. All right. On to the next one. You know what? I might put Jan in the C tier, honestly. I don't think Jan throws enough kicks in order for me to put him in the B tier. Technical-wise, technique-wise, I think he's much better than Gagey, and I think he's much better than Bilal. But again, when I'm talking about kicks, I'm talking about, like, does he use them to win his fights? Jan does not throw that many kicks. He doesn't throw that many. Right? I feel like all these guys make kicking a bigger part of their game than Jan. But fuck it, I'll put Jan in the B tier. It just feels wrong to put him in there with Bilal. Uh, on to the next one. Alexander Volkov, putting him in the B tier too. Very good kicks, and he's folded people with front kicks to the body. We saw him TKO Jarzinho Rosenstrike with just simple old front kicks to the body. We saw him mince up tied to Ivasa. A big part of that coming from leg kicks and front kicks to the body. Uh, so yeah, I think that Alexander Volkov needs to be mentioned on this list as well. One of the best kickers in the heavier weight classes. All he needs to do is have another really impressive showcase with his kicks for me to bump him up a little bit. But right now, I'm going to put him in the B tier. Saeed Nurmagomedov, A tier. May have not had the same amount of finishes as some of these other guys. And he has finished some people with his kicks, but they're against lower level opponents. But either way, just what this guy's able to do, how quick he is with his kicks. We talked about Jonathan Martinez. Saeed Nurmagomedov was whooping Jonathan Martinez up with spinning kicks and just good old-fashioned body kicks and whatnot. And I think that Saeed Nurmagomedov needs to be mentioned on this list as well. Maybe not enough finishes, maybe not enough uh, high-level performances for him to like move up into a higher tier, but I do believe he is more impressive with his kicking game than anyone in the B tier right now. So I'm going to put Saeed in there too. Leon Edwards... I'm going to put Leon in the B tier, all right? Now, Leon isn't, like, finishing that many people with his kicks. Of course, there's the head kick KO. Beautiful head kick KO over Kamar Usman. That's one of the best moments in UFC history. But outside of that, he doesn't really overwhelm people with kicks. He kind of just skirts by, and that's basically it. But the fact is, Leon Edwards does win fights with his kicks. He doesn't throw his hands that often. A lot of his success just comes from body kicks leg kicks at range and it works and he does it at the high, highest level he has perfect technique on it he manages the, the kicking range better than anyone else in his division arguably but he's not really doing the same things as wonder boy or ian gary and to be fair the people that he's out leg kicking are guys like Usman and colby covington fighters that aren't really known for also having phenomenal kicking games so for that reason i think he's a little bit more or well, a lot more underwhelming than MVP or Ian Gary or Wonderboy. But uh, Leon Edwards, kind of like Islam Makhchev, also has a really good clinch game. He's got some really dangerous knees in the clinch, but uh, just not the overwhelming ability and the dangerous element needed to be higher up on this list, okay? Max Holloway. I want to put Holloway in the B tier too. Now, I know Holloway broke Gagey's nose with spinning kicks. I get that. But for the most part, Holloway is for the most part a boxer, right? He's been throwing a lot of kicks these days, absolutely. And it's becoming a bigger part of his game. But I just need to see a little bit more of it in order for me to bump him up. Like, I think that he's still, for the most part, winning his fights with his boxing. But his leg kicks are solid. His roundhouse kicks to the body are really good. Uh, he's got some decent head kicks. But nothing crazy outside of that spinning kick, outside of that jumping spinning kick that he likes to throw when people are closing the distance at him. Outside of that, there's nothing that really impresses me that much other than just straight volume and like good old fashioned, like basic solid technique. Uh, but I'm just saying he doesn't really stand out that much from the rest of the guys on the beach here. But Holloway's got a really good kicking game, man. 
He's one of these guys that can just, you know, win fights and outpoint people in part due to the fact that he's kicking a lot as well. So I'm going to put Holloway in the B tier, especially at this point in his career, since he's throwing a lot more of them. Uh, Robert Whitaker, I'm going to put Whitaker in the C tier. <laughs> and I know people are going to riot in the comments, but listen, Whitaker outside of the head kick combination, outside of the knee stomps against Darren Till and Yoel Romero in the rematch, maybe. Whitaker doesn't really throw that many kicks, right? Like he has some decent side kicks and he has some decent body kicks and he can keep people at bay pretty well. But for the most part, Whitaker is a, a guy that uses his karate blitz to box, to throw hands. The head kick setup is amazing from Robert Whitaker. It's, it's super high level. But when is he finishing people with it? Outside of way back in the day. I know he dropped Jared Kennanier. I know he was catching Marvin Vittori with kicks. And I know he was catching Marvin Vittori with like knees to the face. So, you know, ah, fuck it, dude. I'm going to put Whitaker in the B tier. Now that I'm thinking about the Vittori fight, the Cannoneer fight, he's got some solid kicks. But in the Costa fight, Whitaker was hardly throwing kicks, right? In the Adesanya fight, I get it. Izzy's going to be the, the Ranger guy. Whitaker was, for the most part, just boxing with him, right? Yoel Romero fights Whitaker. What you know, he was throwing a lot of kicks. I, I'm gonna give Whitaker some some respect, man. He he was landing a lot of good kicks on Yoel Romero. He even broke his orbital bone with a kick too. So you know, for that reason, I'm gonna put Whitaker in the B tier. But again, it's like Whitaker's one of these guys like Roman Kopylov, where he doesn't throw a ton of them, but when he does throw them, he puts a lot of sting on them, and uh, he can't hurt people with them. He can sort of change the course of a fight and hurt, you know fold people a little bit if he lands the right shot. But it's just like we don't see enough dominance from the kicking game to put him that much higher. All right. Jamal Hill. I'm going to put Jamal Hill in the B tier. Underrated kicker. He's got a really good kicking game. Fast leg kicks. Great body kicks. Great head kicks. He beat the shit out of Glover Deshera with kicks alone for the most part. Mm, not kicks alone. All right. But I feel like people forget. People forget, man. Jamal Hill, a lot of his strikes against Glover came from head kicks, body kicks, leg kicks. Uh, he's really good with his kicking game. For the most part, he is a boxer, but his kicks, underrated. Very underrated. Uh, so, no, nah, I'm going to put him in the seat here, to be honest, because I feel like there's not enough... <laughs> I feel like there's not enough performances from Jamal Hill where his kicks are like the main focus point, where, um, you know, for some of these B-tier fighters, there have been more fights where they've like had kicks be a big thing for them throughout their career. Giga Chikadze. I'm putting Giga in the B tier. This dude beat the shit out of Edson Barboza with kicks and people forget it. People forget, but they really do. Giga Chikadze sunned Edson Barboza with kicks to the body and kicks to the head. Very impressive performance, but that was old Giga Chikadze. Current Giga Chikadze, underwhelming. A little bit underwhelming. Now, yes, he body kicked TKO'd Cub Swanson. Dude, Cub Swanson's been finished by so many kicks throughout his career, but... He had a really good liver kick KO against uh, Cub Swanson. And he sunned Edson Barboza when they fought with his kicks. His speed was on another level that night. But uh, he took a few years off, looked a little bit rusty in his last fight. I don't know. I mean, I think Giga still has a really good kicking game. But um, I need to see him come back against Arnold Allen and, and show out a little bit more for me to bump him back up. But right now, put him in the B tier. Colby Covington. I'm going to put Colby Covington in the D tier. All right. I know Yuri Prohaska is in the F tier. Colby's in the D tier. I just felt like I needed to have another fighter that's not that good with his kicks. Um, but Covington has like some flimsy kicks as well. But you know what? He did head kick Usman a few times. He had some good body kicks against Usman. Some good body kicks against Tyron Woodley as well. Uh, I'll put him in the D tier. Although he should be in the F tier. And Yuri Prohaska should be in the Z tier, to be honest. But, you know, I thought... He's just slightly better than Yuri with his kicks. Good front kicks, too. Um, yeah, Chris Gutierrez, another mention uh, for the B tier. Gutierrez is a guy that's always on the back foot pitter-patter. He's, he's a, he's a pitter-patter pop shotter, right? No sting on his kicks. Just kind of backs up and kicks you at range and stays safe. Uh, but he can't really beat people at the highest level with his kicking game alone. It's only like lower level guys or people that are on the verge of retirement. Right, He doesn't really finish a lot of people with his kicks, but it's like 95% of his game, and he's had a UFC main event, and like he is a known fighter 
and the only thing he does is kick at range. So I may as well put him in the B tier because it's like, you know, in order to be close to the rankings where all you do is kick, you're pretty good with your kicks. So you got to give him some respect for that. Uh, Khalil Roundtree, C tier. I know some people are going to hate that. This dude doesn't throw kicks anymore. All right. I know he has a couple of crazy soccer kick to the body KOs. And he dropped, uh, what's his name? He dropped Eric Anders with kicks. And he was, you know, showing a really good Muay Thai stance. This dude fought Anthony Smith and didn't throw more than one or two kicks throughout the entirety of that fight. I don't even think he threw two. That alone is putting him C tier. He's got great roundhouse kicks. But for the most part, this guy is a boxer, all right? And I think people give him too much credit for his kicking game and how much success it gives him. He's like Gagey. He'll throw like four around if you're lucky. And that's if you're lucky, all right? But right now, he's C-tier. Again, Gagey would have been way higher back in the day. Imavov, B-tier. Amazing front kicks to the body. Really good head kicks. Um, and a really good ability to keep people at distance with his kicks, but uh, nothing too amazing. Charlie Campbell, I'm going to put Campbell in the C tier, underrated kicker, solid leg kick KOs outside of the UFC, and he reminds me of Gagey. He puts everything into his leg kicks, and I think that as we see this guy more in the UFC, we're going to start to think of him as like one of the best leg kickers in the UFC. So I'm going to put Charlie Campbell in the C tier. Last but not least, Kyler Phillips, I'm going to put him in the B tier. Very flashy on the feet, great knees up the middle, great side kicks, really good head kicks, and super fast and untelegraphed with everything that he throws. So yeah, this is my kicking tier list, guys. S tier, we got all these best kickers in the UFC, best kickers in MMA. A tier, guys that are just slightly below there. B tier, a lot of solid kickers. The people that would have been higher back in the day, Aldo would have been an S tier fighter. Now he's a little bit more boxing heavy, so I have him A tier. Jones, honestly, I would have had a mess here, but because he's been inactive and he's like fat Jones fighting at heavyweight, we don't know how good his kicking game is these days. And in his last couple of fights at light heavyweight against Santos and against Reyes, his kicking game did not look that impressive. So I would have had a mess here back in the day. Gagey, I probably would have had a mate here way back in the day, but probably not now. He just doesn't throw enough of them. But let me know what you guys think in the comments until next time.